Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this month's Creative Cultures webinar on an introduction to cross-cultural SEO services. My name is Grace, I'm a project manager at Creative Culture. Um, I saw a few familiar faces join us, so hello. Um, we decided to do a webinar on SEO services because this is something we've seen our clients requesting a lot recently. And we want to enable you guys to add it to your um, service offering. Um, so we have Gaia, an account manager here at Creative Culture joining us today. Um, she'll be explaining a little bit about the type of SEO services we offer um, at Creative Culture and be giving an example of a project um, to put it into context a bit more for you guys. And then we'll be hearing from Anna, who is an SEO specialist we work with a lot. Um, and she'll be talking about how she moved from trans creation more into SEO services and also um, explaining how important um, localization and um, cultural relevance is um, with SEO. Um, so we will also be having a Q&A session at the end. Um, so if you could just save your questions for then and just um, pop it in the Q&A function. Um, if you want to contact us during the webinar, um, you can also use the chat function as well. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Gaia. Thank you, Grace. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. So today we will talk about SEO. Um, SEO means search engine optimization. And a creative culture, we offer various services. For example, SEO keyword research or generation, SEO trans creation, SEO copywriting, SEO analytics. Uh, with SEO keyword research, um, we look for keywords to optimize web copy so that it ranks high when we look for something on a search engine. So for example, on Google. And with keyword research, we find the best keywords that perform uh, best in each market. And it's important that they are not transcreated, but they're actually researched and generated for that specific market to have a good search volume as well. And search volume means the average monthly uh, searches that um, are carried out for that particular keyword. Um, in SEO transcreation and SEO copywriting, we include uh, keywords into copy that is being either transcreated or written. <clears throat> and this is a mix of SEO keyword generation and SEO um, keyword integration into copy. With SEO analytics, on the other hand, we keep track of the performance of um, optimized copy over time. And I'm gonna give you an example of a successful project. Last year, we worked on the um, transcreation and optimization of the website for a client that uh, operates in the air cooling solution industry. And we um, transcreated and optimized their website for um, 12 languages, particularly. So we were asked to uh, transcreate the website and also optimize by researching the best performing keywords in all those uh, key markets. And now after one year, we are already seeing uh, the good results because we've seen an increase in the website visits um, of 30% already. So this is very positive in just one year. Um, and now I'm gonna give the floor to Anna for further details on how to add SEO services to your portfolio. Thanks Anna for being here. Uh, thank you both Grace and Gaia for having me here today and uh, welcome everyone to the webinar. So what I'm going to be um, explaining a little bit are these following four points. First, um, how to get started uh, as an SEO specialist. I'm just going to give you some details basically on my, uh, my approach to it. Uh, then I'm going to explain briefly what localization and cultural relevance is uh, or are and why does, it, does that matter for these type of projects. And then we're going to go through a brief um, overview of SEO projects. What does it entail? How do they work? And I'm going to give you some names of certain tools and maybe a couple of tips that might help you to either improve if you already know about these type of projects or to maybe get started and research all these tools to, to learn how, 
SEO works and how you can bring that into your, into your CV. So Grace, if you don't mind going through the next slide. Thank you. So first of all, um, Gaia has already given us a, a, an overview of what SEO is, and uh, you might already know a little bit about it, but it's definitely very important that you know what it means, what does it entail, and what and how can you apply that to your freelance translation, transliteration, or copyrighted portfolio. So basically understanding that SEO is a way to either research keywords or work with certain keywords to optimize the content for a client so that they have better visibility and they have better opportunities as a brand. Uh, so basically you've probably done, as a translator, you might have already done quite a lot of projects that involve marketing content or, um, or like copy creation, where you might have already seen certain things such as, for example, what we see as the title and description when you search in a, in a, um, in a search engine such as Google, you will see a title and then you click on that link and there is a, slight, a, a, a short definition underneath. That is what we call metadata. And you probably have already translated some of these things without even realizing that that is part of the SEO world in the, in the um, translation industry, let's say. Um, and that is already something that you can already um, learn about and start to, to identify as part of the SEO project. So learning that everything that you are working on probably has already a certain link with the SEO content and um, start understanding better what you're doing. Probably there are quite a lot of character limitations or certain things. All these things are probably related to to something else. And in most cases, um, especially talking about marketing or advertising, advertising projects, uh, is already related to how to optimize your website and how to optimize your content to reach a wider audience. So it's important that you start analyzing a bit better maybe the content you're working on to see whether this meets the SEO specifications so you can start um, improving better in that sense and, um, and get to learn and get to know and learn more about this whole thing so you can start bringing it to your, to your experience to ultimately start offering this to your clients. So for example, in my case, I started with uh, Google actually as a company translating all the Google ads and uh, where we did uh, a lot of translation of keywords, literal translation, not literal, but like re regular translation. So it wasn't really like uh, keyword generation or keyword research, but that gave me the opportunity to learn how these keywords work, how do you usually phrase them, and how do you then in, in, in implement them into the copy to optimize it and, and uh, and bring the client searches higher in the in the results when you use Google. So from that, I already got to know this, this perspective and then I could bring that into other projects where, they were, where I was requested to, to do either keyword research or, or optimize any content. And it's also thanks to the, to the work of many project managers and many companies who also are there to teach you how certain things work. And then they might even be able to, to learn from you if you have to some exchange of communication uh, that you can start enriching all your knowledge about this and then bring that to your CV. Um, so just do a lot of research about SEO and hopefully little by little, you can start bringing that as an extra service. And when you're ready, feel free to offer it. Uh, and especially our colleagues here are probably gonna be quite happy to learn that you, they have another, another freelancer ready to help with this type of projects. Um, now we're gonna move on to localization and cultural relevance. So as you might know, you might already know what localization is, but in this content is very important so that the brand is there, it's visible, and it gets more opportunities to reach their audience. So as we can see here, localization helps entering new markets easily. It provides a competitive edge for the company, and it increases also customer satisfaction, brand, uh, brand loyalty, and revenue. Uh, why is it important to have a culturally adapted content is that uh, you get uh, more directly to your audience. You get to know better how your audience is gonna react to your brand and you also show a better understanding of how they're gonna look for you so that when they actually look for you, you pop up 
in the first place or a second place that you get better opportunities at being seen. So it's very important that you know very well your, your target culture. Uh, so it would be ideal if you work with what it is your mother tongue or your original uh, culture so that you understand better how the, the, the audience over there or the, the population works and, and things and processes information so that you can bring that as an extra bit of information to uh, improve all your, all your work and to ultimately give the client a much, much better chance to, to appear and be visible for the target culture and market. Um, so overall, it's very important that you don't just keep it at a, sorry, at a very literal level, but really understand, do your proper research and use all the tools that you have at hand to bring um, tools and also people you can communicate with and something like double check some information to bring all the best that you can to, uh, to provide the best work or the best approach to your, to your SEO project. Yeah, we can move on to the next one. I hope that was clear. Uh, this is a quick overview about how an SEO project works. So most likely you're going to be requested uh, a project with a, with a brief where they're going to ask you probably you have, we need to do keyword research, hopefully like probably also optimization and copy, crea uh, copy creation or copy adaptation of a project so that this whole content is adapted to your target culture and we can improve the chances of the client to be seen in a, in a digital sphere, let's say. So the brief will come in. That was probably gonna be, they're gonna probably explain to you what is the target, what is the content, uh, what is the approach and how many keywords you, we need, whether we just need a full research of loads of them or we need a research, but then a classification of some of them so that we find the primary keyword we're, we're, that we are gonna use to optimize the main content and then secondary keywords to kind of enrich the whole copy. Um, so once the brief is clear and has been clarified with the client and, the, and anyone involved, uh, we will begin the whole process. This process involves, first of all, most likely a keyword research. That is what this um, stands for, the first on top, um, where you're gonna use probably most likely a keyword tool that you are gonna find online. You, for that, you're gonna be either be given access or you might already have access to it, or you might work with a free tool that you find online. Here, you're gonna do a proper research finding keywords that you're gonna have to actively put yourself. Um, um, you can find assistance by using, uh, obviously Google, I think is the most, uh, the richest engine out there to get any results, but obviously there are others like Yahoo and so on that you can also use, or even in some cases, even Amazon is gonna be a, one of the filters to go through keywords to get the specific results for 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 that specific market um, after you've done a proper keyword research where you're gonna have to double check whether they they are these keywords work whether they are idiomatic as much as possible because sometimes keywords are quite cryptic and that is also okay uh, you will also see a lot of lack of accents and specific characters from your own language that are not going to appear there because not all these um, engines process all those characters but that doesn't mean that the core is not going to work um, and also a very important thing to do is sometimes double checking your keywords with uh, google incognito so that you double check whether that keyword really works because as you know, with all the algorithm, algorithms uh, nowadays that we use on our current search in Google, sometimes you're gonna be given specific results that might not be really relevant. They're just relevant to you because you've done all these searches. So it's important that you check against Google incognito so that you can double check whether <clears throat> these keywords are actually relevant for the search that you are doing. After that, in many cases, you're gonna to have to do a classification. This classification could be per category, subcategory, and so on that is relevant for the client. So for example, let's say we are looking for milk, types of milk, and then you're gonna have food uh, or drinks uh, uh, with calcium and so on. I don't know, you can do a classification. This might be given to you, or you're gonna to have to look for the titles of all these uh, categories. 
uh, but that's going to um, be irrelevant uh, relevant for the client to know where all these keywords fall, like what is the relevance of these keywords in order to probably have some content optimized or some content created. They might need to know whether they are keywords that are relevant to them to create content that is going to have a proper impact in the target audience that is going to bring them to them so that the audience, when they're looking for you, when they are looking for something, they're going to come to you. This is the ultimate um, goal. And then, as you can see here, SV plus BT, these are things that are usually part of the process of keyword research and the whole uh, SEO project. SV means uh, search volume. This is given to you by the keyword uh, research tool that you're going to be using. It's probably the most common figure that you're going to see there. Then they're going to see, you're going to see loads of results. You might not know what they are, but the search volume is always there. Uh, a note about that that I'm going to probably uh, repeat a uh, slide later is that not all tools provide an edge vo a search volume that is one figure. Some of them provide a range. So you need to clarify with the client whether this is OK with them or whether they need a specific figure that is most usually the case. And then BT basically means back translation. And in many cases, you're going to have to provide for all your keyword list so that the client knows what we are dealing with, basically. And then ultimately, you have the, the final result. And uh, with some luck, the, the whole research is going to provide a good view for the client to say, OK, we want to create more content and we want to optimize it with all the work we've done so that um, so that they have a most success, uh, more successful brand approach uh, overall. Yeah. I think we can move on to the next one, which are just some tools and tips about uh, for the SEO projects. So you have here a very small overview of some of the most used um, keyword tools. SEMrush is a very complete tool. Uh, apart from Google, Ads Keyword Planner, all of these tools are paid for. So in some cases, you might be given the credentials by the client or agency you're working with. And in some other uh, cases, you might just need to create an account if you're working on this regularly, probably is going to be profitable for you and cost effective uh, if you're working enough on these type of projects. Um, so as I was saying, SEMRAS is a very, very complete tool. Uh, it has all the results that you're looking for. <laughs> uh, you can insert lists of keywords. You can look for keywords individually. You can uh, have rankings. You can have search volumes, trends, and so on of all these uh, keywords. So it's a tool that is very, very powerful if, um, if the client has, is requesting a very big um, res result, let's say, like if they want a lot of detail. Keyword tool is the tool I use, <clears throat> sorry, the most often. And is even though it seems quite simple, it's very, it's very effective. It has a lot of, of features that are very, very useful. First of all, you can look for keywords one by one. You can get related keywords to that. You can get question-like keywords, like the one you, you've introduced. You can look for a whole list of keywords up to 700, I think. Uh, so you get all the search volume and results for all them, for all of them in one go. Uh, you can do the search per, uh, depending on a specific um, uh, engines, for example, Google or Yahoo, or you can also do the uh, Amazon search, the YouTube search, the Twitter search. There are lots of searches. Most, uh, I usually work with Google and Amazon depending on the project. But obviously, if your client is requesting a different goal, um, you can change that. Um, Uber Suggest is also a free tool that you have online. It seems quite, I haven't used it, but it seems quite complete as well. <clears throat> and it uh, seems to have quite, most of the most basic features that are going to be necessary for the majority of these projects. Mangles, I think, is the tool that uh, our colleagues from um, Creative Culture use. Uh, there's also quite a lot of uh, functions within this one, and uh, it's also quite complete. Uh, and Serpstat is more, um, it's more simplistic in the sense that there is a, uh, a much more limited way of searching. It definitely searches for Google, 
but it doesn't search for many other engines. And I think the results are not as rich, but obviously it's, a, it's one of the most used tools as well. And I left Google Ads for the end because Google Ads doesn't provide one figure search volumes by a range. That means that, for example, if I look for milk in uh, SEMrush, let's say, I get 3,000 results and Google tells me I get one, uh, 100 to 1,000 results or, or 1,000 to uh, 10K results. That means it's just a range. I don't know exactly what the search volume is. And for many clients, this is not useful and this is not relevant. So uh, for example, I use a keyword planner from Google to do some researches sometimes to compare what, I have, what I'm looking for, but not as an ultimate tool to get the results or all the data that I need. Um, and now I'm going to show you quickly how the keyword tool, but this is just an example in the next slide, how it looks. So you get an idea of what the whole thing I've been talking about. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, how it looks generally. This is keyword tool, but most of the tools look exactly the same, even though they might have different layouts, the functions are the same. So I have highlighted here a couple of, uh, of frames. The first one, as I, as I was saying, there is Google, YouTube, Bing, Amazon, and so on. This uh, is what you can select depending on the engine that you're looking for, like uh, where you want to extract the data from. Then you have the, the bar where you insert the keyword. In this case, I introduced keyword tool, but obviously this is very simple. You're going to have to look for whatever is relevant for your project, like, I don't know, brands of milk or um uh, drinking elements that you can have in the morning or whatever i don't know like a, a search uh, that is relevant for the project and for the content and also you're gonna have to determine whether you are looking for something with brand like with a brand keyword or not branded so you have to keep it general or you have to keep it relevant but not branded or you're looking for branded and by brand i mean after keyword tool for example here i will use keyword tool uh, google let's say and that google will be the brand will work as a brand and sometimes the client want that but mo most of uh, in most cases they don't want to be branded because if you think about a user going into a search engine looking for something they are not going to be looking for uh i don't know types of water um, I don't know, Bethoya is one from Spain. Uh, that might not be relevant. You just want the types of water to see how many results, what is more relevant to you, and then you select the brand as a user. You go for what you're looking for. So that is also important to keep in mind. And in the world of uh, keywords, we also talk, talk about short and long keywords. Short keyword will be this keyword tool. A long keyword will be keyword tool that I use for bleep, 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 bleep. So much longer. It's also true that most of these long keywords don't get a very relevant search volume, but many of them do. And sometimes they are very important to, uh, to make the client uh, stand out about, uh, among the whole <laughs> madness that is the market out there. So let's say, for example, we are looking for a woman's t-shirt. So woman's t-shirt, blue dots, that will be the long keyword is more complete and is more relevant and might have a much bigger impact for what the client is selling ultimately. Uh, and then um, here you just have an overview of what the um, kind of like the graphs that you can see in, key in the keyword tool. However, this might not be seen always the same in other tools. What is relevant is what you see at the bottom, you have the keywords, which is the whole list of keywords. Then you have the search volume, which is what I was talking about, the, the figure that shows you how many times this keyword has been looked for in the last months. And then as you can see at the very end, you have the competition. <clears throat> this is a figure that is also usually uh, requested by the client. So they know where they are ranking um, depending on the, on the keyword and whether it will work for their, for their whole market. And as you can see here, you also get trends and the prices. Um, this might be fair uh, this may vary in other tools, but as I was saying, keyword tool looks, looks really simple, but it has a lot of um, uh, a lot of results. But of course, I'm not just here to sell you this tool. You can research many other tools, and most likely you're going to find all this information in any of them. Uh, so I hope all of that was clear. I know it was a lot of information in a very short period of time. 
but um, maybe we can get back to some of your questions now to clarify some of these. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, that was really helpful and interesting. Um, so we'll start with the questions um, that some of you put forward in the um, application form. Um, so the first one was, which tools do you recommend to do bulk keyword analysis? Okay, so I think I may have uh, mentioned these earlier. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, I, I, SEMrush and uh, Keyword Tool offer this option. Uh, so basically there is an option where you go check list of keywords. Um, it's also important to note that sometimes these amount of searches are limited. So it, it's limited to a certain amount of keywords per list. Uh, as I mentioned in Keyword Tool, for example, is 700. I think SEMrush allows for more, but sometimes is less. Um, but these, you can just insert a list of loads of keywords one by one. You can just copy paste it from Excel. You don't have to type them all. Uh, and then click on the specific market. So select your language, select the, the currency you're looking for. And, and that will give you a whole result, whether there is a search volume, whether uh, they have any competition figures. And then you can extract all of this content as an Excel file. Uh, where you will see all the information and the search volume also per month. Not only the general search volume for a specific amount of time, but like January, February and so on. Um, so as I was saying, these sometimes searches are limited depending on the tool that you're using, whether you're paying for it or not, you have an account or not. And uh, you have to consider that if you're working on a very big project, um, sometimes these searches are limited to 10 in, for 24 hours. So keep that in mind in order not to get blocked or give yourself enough time so that you don't run out of searches when you still need to deliver something within the same day. Great. Um, we just had a more slightly more practical question from someone. Um, how much do you typically charge by the hour? If so, how do you work out the amount of time you spend on any given project? Okay, so usually for um, SEO projects is not is not based on the amount of keywords, but based on the amount of URL you have to work on. By URL, I mean product. So for example, say that you are working for a fashion brand and they want to look for keywords for t-shirts, for trousers, and for accessories. Each one of these categories is going to be a URL. So I usually allocate around one or one point, like you can still... For example, within one hour, you can work on three categories. I think I put my limit at five, depending on this, the type of, um, of content. For example, for me, working on fashion content is very quick. And if I'm requested about something for finance, for example, I might require some more time because I need to work the terminology better. Uh, so you need to consider that as well, depending on your, or on your specialism and what you feel more comfortable with. Uh, but I would say no more than three or four products per hour. So if you are if you are being requested, like, can you help us with I don't know uh, the keyword research for mm, these three products? You can say, okay, that's one hour's work, or one point five hours if you need more time. But uh, if you are being requested, we need we have I don't know twelve products, then make the calculation <laughs> and keep time for that. And also when I talk about one hour, I'm just talking about keyword research, obviously the optimization, that meaning you receive a copy already translated or transcreated where you're gonna optimize it with all the keywords that have been pre-approved after your research, that is extra content and extra hours of work, obviously, that you can probably start charge as a proofreading hourly rate. I hope that helped. <laughs> Yeah, um, just to add to that, um, so knowing the kind of information you need to supply clients, such as creative culture, um, how many keywords per hour do you think you could um, analyze if you needed to? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, that really depends on the content. Uh, I mean, the, the type of content you're working with and what you feel more comfortable with. but that's a that's a quite a tricky question because usually you're working on it and it's like I'm not really sure how many keywords I can analyze but 
uh, it's always it requires a lot of time. That's one thing I, I can say that it does take a lot of time because you have to check one by one whether they work, they are relevant, and so on. So it's a job that takes more time than a regular just a review of things. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot give any specific answer because I have never really checked. I can tell you that, for example, researching 15 words for three products. So that will take me around one hour, one hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that was really helpful. Um, then lastly, um, when we are asked to find um, keywords by the client, um, how can we look for trends and insights um, with keywords? Okay, so this is something that sometimes the client requests at the end when you've already provided your whole keyword research list. And uh, they say, okay, now we want to see uh, what the trends are for the keywords we've selected as primary and secondary for this specific product. That meaning, for example, you've done a research of 15 or 20 keywords for one product. Out of those 15, 20, you select the primary keyword, the one that they are going to use for titles or headlines and throughout the copy, and then some secondary keywords that you are going to include also in the whole content so that that, that whole copy is optimized. So sometimes they want to know what the trends of these primary keywords are. So what you can use is a tool such as uh, Google Trends that is actually also available for free online. Although sometimes you might need to have a Google Ads account, but I've been using it without that and it's been working. Um, and there you can see if you introduce one keyword, you can see the trend in the following months and you can say, okay, so for January, this might not be very productive, but it's gonna have a high trend search for the summer or over the winter or before Christmas or something like that. And this is something they might ask you to, to check and uh, it's easy to, to search for as well. It's just a matter of having some time to introduce some keywords and doing the search online uh, with this tool. And um, they might also ask you for some rankings. Uh, I think we had a conversation about this actually with Gaia some weeks ago. And this is something that the freelancers or the people who, who are actually looking for keywords than usually do for the client when you're doing culturally, like to adapt it and localize it. Um, but there are tools such as Simras that provide all these provide all these rankings. And by rankings, they mean um, what is the possibility for that keyword to appear on your website, to have what is the relevance for that keyword to your website ultimately. And uh, they want to know. And the ranking is basically like a position, first, second, third, and then a very long list. Sometimes you have a lot of keywords that are like, branded for other brands but might still be relevant as a competitor keyword for your content and they might have a really low ranking position but they might still be relevant to to appear if not as primary keywords there is also what is called back end keywords which are keywords that are hidden behind the page the site uh, in the online basically on the website of this client. This happens a lot, for example, in Amazon pages, there is backend keywords that when people look for uh, maybe a bad word or a, or a spelling that doesn't usually work for that, for that product, they will still re get this result for, for example, pencil. And you write another thing that is not pencil, but is related to pencil and people use it culturally, it might still come up as this result. So I've added an extra question, an extra answer to your question there. But uh, to answer that question, the trends, you can either find them on some of the keyword results, uh, keyword research tools, or on Google Trends, Google Analytics. Great, thank you, Anna. <laughs> um, so I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Um, we will be sending uh, the recording of the webinar um, sometime next week um, in case you want to review anything. Um, so wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a nice rest of the day um, and we look forward to working with you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.